Hello everyone and welcome to today's Optional Excellence and Management session, Attitude is Everything. During today's session, we're going to review the power of our positive attitudes and how we alone can change the world around us. But let's get started first with a brief reflection. Our lives are not determined by what happens to us but by how we react to what happens. Not by, what, not by what life brings to us, but by the attitude we bring to life. A positive attitude causes a chain reaction of positive thoughts, events, and outcomes. It is a catalyst, a spark that creates extraordinary results. And that is an author unknown. So as we think about our attitude, is it really possible to control the world around you? Many of you may be asking yourself, is, is it? Is that really possible? How can you possibly make a dip, that kind of a difference, that significant of a difference? And the simple answer is yes, it is possible. You know those people who have those, you know, eternally optimistic viewpoints around the world. They never seem to be brought down it's because they have made a choice. They have made a choice to take control of their attitude and take control of their outlook on life. So it is possible and it starts by each of us controlling our attitude. While we can't control the events that occur in our lives, you can control your reactions. Those choices, they're ours. So how do we begin to control those events? How do we start to see that glass as half full instead of that half empty? And it starts by choosing who you're going to be today as Eleanor Roosevelt has so eloquently said to us. Do you know which path you choose? What's your outlook on the world around you? Do you find yourself to be perpetually happy? Or do you see that glass as half empty? Just like with any change, whether that's a physical change by exercising or eating healthy or a mental shift we're trying to make, like changing our attitude, it's about building habits. And it starts by each of us taking that first step. Many of us get frustrated by change because we want it to occur. And we live in a society and a culture where we expect things to happen right away, right now. So much of our lives are fast paced. We can get our meals in our car. We never have to sit at a table if we don't want to. We can have access immediately to information and products using our smartphones or the internet. We have instant access to so much that we forget how much time and commitment change takes. As this quote says, we can't change our destination overnight, but we can change our direction overnight. We can take the first steps to moving towards a healthier you, taking that first step to building those new habits. So what I want you to do is grab a piece of paper. We're gonna take a quick pop quiz, and don't worry, there are no right or wrong answers in this quiz. And with your piece of paper, I want you to number it from one to 10. I'm gonna ask you a series of really simple questions. And I want you to answer them without a whole lot of thought. Just go with your gut. Think about your trends and your actions. Try to answer each one with a re resounding yes or no. But maybe you're not sure. Maybe you're not sure how you behave or maybe it's sometimes or maybe. Those are okay answers too. If you, if you aren't really sure, leave it blank or write I don't know. Or if it's an occasional, write maybe or sometimes. Okay, so let's get started. Question number one. You find yourself easily irritated by others. Think about yes, no, or an I don't know. Question number two. Nothing ever seems to go your way.
Question number three. Good things always seem to happen to other people. Number four. More people ought to see things the way I do. Number five. More often than not, my glass is half empty. Number six. People give you feedback that you're stubborn. Number seven. You get angry easily when things go wrong. Number eight. Words like can't, won't, shouldn't, could have, would have, are used regularly in your vocabulary. Number nine, drama, blowing things out of proportion, gossip. There are things that regularly, regularly make it into your conversations. And number 10, you oftentimes struggle with celebrating other people's successes. Now take a moment to add up your yeses. You'll want to include any I don't knows, maybes, or sometimes into your yes category. If you're unsure, include it. And write down your total number. You don't have to share this with anybody. This is just for you. But take a look. Out of 10 questions, is your glass half full or is your glass half empty? What's your outlook day to day about life? And what does this self-reflection say about your attitude? Because attitude truly is everything and it's in everything we do. From the language we use, how we talk to our patients, our customers, how we casually converse in the lunchroom, or even the way we send an email. What does your attitude say about how you interact with others? Oftentimes our attitudes are a reflection of our belief systems. So what does your attitude say about your beliefs? Many of us see the world around us as limiting. And this is called experiencing limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs are mindsets which we see the world limiting our possibilities and our ability to find solutions. Most of us experience limiting beliefs at some point in our lives. Some of us, however, may just experiencing, experience them, them more frequently. The bigger question isn't whether or not you have limiting beliefs, but how do you change them when you do experience them? How do you control those negative thoughts from creeping in and taking over a positive attitude? We need to take a page out of their book. Children are innately good and they see the world as innately good. They're born with a sense of trust, compassion, warmth, and goodness. We were all born with that sense of trust, compassion, warmth, and goodness. We bring children into the world and they see others as good. The world around them, their environment, the people that support them, help them shape those values as they experience the world, as all of ours have been shaped. They come into a world with a belief system that doesn't have limits. And then they learn limits through experiences. But as adults, we've learned and adapted to the world around us to limit our belief systems. Why? Many of us have sub subscribed to a new way of thinking. And oftentimes, our experiences have sh helped shape those beliefs. If we've changed our beliefs one time, 
can't we change it back? We can subscribe to a new way of thinking. It just has to start with taking the first step, a first thought. And it starts by changing our habits. It's time for many of us, if not all of us, to start forming new and positive habits for the benefit of ourselves and those around us. We really can control and change these adapted belief systems. Have you ever thought to yourself, I'll be happy when I get a raise or a promotion? Or, I'll be happy when I get through this time of year. Or I get through the holidays. Or I'll be happy when I find a partner who loves me for who I am or when we can have a second child or I'll be happy when this person's nice to me or I'll be happy and fill in the blank on your own script because we've all said it at some point in our lives I'll be happy when our formula for success and happiness is really clear if I work hard now then I'll experience success and then I'll truly find happiness. To live, I work hard, I raise my family, I contribute to my community, I do well at work, and then I retire and then I get to enjoy my life. So I work today to be happy in the future. And it's hard to find that happiness after success when those goalposts of success keep changing we say to ourselves I'll be happy when I get a raise and then you get a raise and you look to the future I want another one that's what makes our society so great I do well in one course or I succeed with one patient now I want to do it again and again and I I perpetually raise the bar these goalposts of success keep changing and when you raise the bar higher and higher through every experiences, when have we stopped and celebrated? When have we stopped and enjoyed those successes and chosen to be happy now? We don't live in a society or a culture that celebrates today. We're always on to the next big thing, the next Apple iPhone, the next version of the iPad. With our fast-paced culture focused on access, we have to remind ourselves to slow down, to be present, to be celebrate, to celebrate. Because only you can reverse the formula for yourself. Only you can put those mental breaks in to slow down. I'm going to choose to be happy today. That is our ultimate responsibility. What holds us back? What stops us from having a great attitude now? We don't need the I'll be happy when, I'll be nice when. We can choose that attitude right this second, today. I want you to take a moment and think about those people around you who are inherently happy. It's like they've just returned from Disneyland and it's contagious. Sometimes we might find ourselves getting irritated with their perpetual happiness, but it's only because we want what they have. We strive so much for success in our culture and think about those people in your lives. Think about them. You've got to know somebody who's that perpetual happy. Maybe you're one of them. Have you ever come across those people in your life who are happy and have a great attitude and a positive outlook and consider them a failure? Have you ever come across an enthusiastic failure? Probably not. Those people who we want some of their magic bottled up probably never get labeled with the word failure because they're choosing their outcome. 
They can't control the events in their lives any more than you or I, but they do get to control how they react to them. And bottling up their magic is easy. It just takes each one of us making that one simple choice. It's the power of positivity. People with positive outlooks on life have scientifically proven that they live longer, healthier lives. They have better coping mechanisms with stress. They have increased and healthier immune systems. They have Im improved resilience. They have better mental and, mental and physical well-being. And they have lower rates of depression or distress. Positive thinking centers on such things as a belief in your abilities, a positive approach to challenges, and trying to make the most of the bad situations. Bad things will and do happen. Sometimes you'll be disappointed or hurt by the actions of other people. This doesn't mean that the world is out to get you or that all people will let you down. Instead, positive thinkers will look at the situation realistically and search for ways that they can improve the situation or try to learn from those experiences. So come on, get happy. It's a habit. So how do you start adopting a happy outlook? Happiness is like a work ethic, and it's not a mystery. It's pretty straightforward. But you have to train the brain to be positive just like you train the body to be healthy. We need to work at being happy. It's not like the McDonald's drive through or an app on our phone where it just happens and it comes because of it's, accept it's accessible to us. It requires work. There's no drug or fad diet that, that gets us to that healthy pinnacle, both physically and mentally. We have to be willing to work at it. So let's talk about getting fit and working out our attitude. Just like you should be finding time every day or every week to work on your physical fitness and your overall health, you need to find time to work on your emotional fitness, your emotional intelligence. So I'm going to go over a few techniques with you to try to help you improve that attitude so that you can look at this picture and you can see that glass is half full. So what I want you to do is take out that same piece of paper, flip it over, write on the back or write on the same one, so you can write down a few of these simple, straightforward techniques to helping you work out our attitude. So first things first, write down three things you're grateful for each day. Go ahead and try it. You should be able to do this really quickly. <laughs> Maybe it's your family, your friends, your job, your health. Quickly, go ahead and write them down. Three things. Most of you probably have your three things already. And that didn't take much time. It probably feels fantastic to be reminded how truly grateful we are in life. Can you make the commitment to start each and every day with what you're grateful for because if you do this every day if you start your day off with three things that you're grateful for science shows that you'll see residual positive effects even six months later from starting your day focused on what you're grateful it helps increase your optimism and increase your success rate so a few quick seconds to start your day with what you're grateful for. The next technique, try meditating for two minutes a day. Focus on your breathing, going in and out. It can help you undo negative effects of multitasking, which basically multitasking is just doing several things not at your full capacity. It helps you retrain your brain to focus and can decrease stress. Meditation is different for different people. For some of us, we picture meditation as sitting cross-legged in an open grassy field with the sun shining down. For others of us, it might be my alone time in between 
visiting patients or on my way to and from work. It might be how I wind down at the end of the evening, taking a few quiet minutes to myself, or time in the shower or the bathtub. Or maybe it's just a few quiet minutes at your workspace. Just make sure that you give yourself two minutes every day to focus on your thoughts, focus on your breathing, and help you think about that one clear present thing at a time. The benefits of this focused thought are immense because it will help you train your brain to be able to focus when you need to on a conversation, on a phone call, on reading an email, on a patient's questions. Next, write about positivity. This is another thing you can do every day. You can start your day or end your day writing about posit positivity. And I ask you to write at least two minutes a day about a positive experience you had that day or the day before. And write for two, time yourself two full minutes. It'll feel like a lifetime, but keep writing until you've hit your time limit and stop when your two minutes occur. And you'll be amazed at what two minutes of positive doing, physical doing, will do for your mental outlook. This kind of activity transforms your mind from being a task-based thinker to a meaning-based thinker. And it'll help us find the meaning behind our interactions instead of just more tasks. So make the commitment, two minutes a day, I'm going to write about my positive experiences. Next, I want you to show appreciation. Write an email or even a card every once in a while to somebody you want to thank or praise. Maybe it's someone you haven't talked to in a while, or a friend or a family member you've lost touch with, or maybe it's your coworker or your spouse or your supervisor. But showing your appreciation actively to other people increases your own feeling of social support. And social support is one of our largest predictors of happiness. And guess what? Guess what gets returned to you when you're putting appreciation out into the world? Those same feelings, those same thoughts. It's the catalyst for the positivity in your life. And last but not least, move every day. Try to exercise at least 10 minutes every day. Whether that's getting up and going for a walk instead of taking a break sitting down. Whether that's parking a little further away at the store or at work and walking to your car. Try to get moving just a little bit every day. Get your blood flowing, your heart pumping, and releasing really good feel-good endorphins and, and hormones and it just really gets your body working in a positive way and it trains your brain that your behaviors matter your physical motions matter and sets you up for success all day I love the thought that motion creates emotion so move take that few minutes every day to get up and get your body remembering that my behaviors matter. Make the commitment. Commit to yourself that for the next 21 days, I'm going to make the commitment to exercising and working out my attitude. Whether it's moving, sending a quick letter or an email, spending time in quiet thought, writing about your positive experiences, and what you're grateful for each day, it should take you no more than 15 minutes a day. Let me ask you, can you spare 15 minutes each day to improve your outlook and change your attitude? Each of us should answer with a resounding yes.
if you can make the commitment to try these attitude changing behaviors for 21 days, you'll form a new habit for how you think and you'll see the benefit for months and years to come. You may say to yourself, I need to work out. Or I really should eat healthier. But then you don't feel like it. Maybe I didn't feel like going to the gym because it was the weather wasn't very good or I was tired. We have to train our mindset that we want to do these things in order for our bodies to take action. So in order for us to make these new habits stick, we have to we have to start, we have to do, we have to take that first step. It starts with that first thought because that motion we take, that first step creates the emotion and the emotion we feel creates the change. When we feel like doing it, guess what we do? We do it and we have to retrain our mind and our body to feel like doing it and that includes being positive. So it's important for each of us to commit to the work we need to do in order to get the results we want out of our lives. And then you can say to yourself once and for all, I'll be happy when. No longer will that be a, a term that you go to regularly. It's I'm choosing to be happy now. Why we wait for success to get happy? We shouldn't. We shouldn't be waiting. We should choose today that this is what's important for me and my positive outlook so that I in turn can benefit those around me. Because that choice, that first step, is what depends on that positive attitude. Your positive attitude depends on you making that choice today. And it's all about our own outlook. It's all about those limiting beliefs. You take a picture of these beautiful roses and I can choose to complain because the rose bush has thorns or I can choose to rejoice because a thorn bush has a rose. That is entirely up to me. So I challenge you, the next time you see a situation that's less than ideal, how can you look at it as an opportunity? How can you work on changing the scope each time you start to walk down that path of negativity? How can you work to reframe? Because for every problem there is a solution, you might just have to Try going down a new path. The question we have to ask ourselves is, are we willing to start taking a new approach to the way we think? Are we ready and prepared to stop those limiting beliefs and try to retrain our mind and our body to think a different way? So think about it. Think about your te 10 questions that you answered and any one that you answered yes, maybe you did an I don't know or left it blank or a sometimes. Think about the exercises that you're going to adopt to be thinking positively and adopting a positive attitude. What are the biggest obstacles you're going to face in achieving the results you want? Take this as an opportunity. Write down what you think your obstacles might be in achieving the attitude you desire. Now look in front of you. Oftentimes, we can narrow down that obstacle to one really simple thing ourselves. We determine if we overcome the obstacles in front of us and we determine our attitude while doing it. That's right, we can't change the world. We can't change the events that occur. We can't choose what's going to happen. 
but we do get to choose how we react to those things. And by choosing to react in a positive and productive manner, we get all those benefits we talked about. We get the, you know, ability to deal and cope with stress. We are healthier. We live longer. We have lower risk of heart disease. I mean, there's all these physical benefits from making that choice. And the only person that can hold us back is truly ourselves. Because only we have the power to create that kind of change for us. Nobody else has that power and nobody else has that control. And when we're reminded that the quality of our life is in direct proportion to the amount of influence you have over yourself, how good of a job are we doing at, at influencing ourselves to reduce those limiting beliefs? And if you're struggling, then it's time to get exercising. It's time to do the work. It's time to schedule that 15 minutes every day to start taking that first step down that path. Because we don't live in a world where change happens immediately because we downloaded an app on our phone or we you know, have more access or more information. Behavior change occurs because we do the work. And it starts with taking that first step forward. So ask yourself, do you have the willingness that it takes? Do you have the willingness to take the risks, to be vulnerable, to try something a little scary? Do we have what it takes to rise above all else and see those positive changes? Do you have the willingness it takes to step out of your comfort zone, to do something a little scary and a little risky, might be a little uncomfortable at first? Do you have the willingness to put other people first? Do you have the willingness to persist longer than anyone else making that commitment? Do you have the willingness to adhere to your values? Do you have the willingness to do the right thing, even if it's not always the easiest path? Do you have the willingness it will take to have the discipline to take step two and step three and step four? Do you have the willingness to persevere? And the willingness to blaze the trail for innovation? How will you be in control of changing your attitude? Because attitude truly is everything. It's a reflection of who we are, how we interact with the world around us, the contributions we make, both personally and professionally, and it's an indicator of our success. It's not about always being the right and wrong. It's not always about you know, the work that we do. It's about the feelings that we do within that work. So what are you doing to change the feelings you put out into the world? Let's talk about doing the work. Your takeaways for today is to take the first step. Make the choice. When you leave this session, choose to work on your positive outlook. Choose to change your limiting beliefs. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not a quick fix. But every time you pay attention to those negative thoughts, you can choose to work on the positive. We need to remember to learn from our children or from our own childhood. When we came into this world and we bring children into this world, 
we start out thinking everything is inherently good and our experiences help us change that so let's work on changing it back and three we gotta get fit we gotta work on our mental outlook our positive attitude our positive outlook is the gateway to success and happiness and effective communication and working well with others and enjoying our work and making a difference in other people's lives it all starts with what we put out to the rest of the world and we have to be willing to take a risk take a new path be vulnerable we don't always do what's easy we need to do what's right and oftentimes that's taking a new path or trying to find a new solution or a new way to to overcome and lastly but most importantly don't let your greatest obstacle hold you back don't let you hold you back don't let your limiting beliefs and your experiences hold you back from making a difference for yourself and for those around you changing your attitude means putting in the time and the effort and the energy to looking at the world a little bit differently it's about self-reflection and self-awareness and by taking the 40 minutes out of your day today to start thinking about the power of positivity is that first step is that first commitment but what we do next what we do for the next hour work day week month or year is where the real work comes into play I challenge you find more information and resources you can go out to the excellence and management tab on the company internet page to see more information on attitude see archived webcasts activities and the newsletters utilize these resources for the tips the tools the videos the articles the activities that can help strengthen your outlook can help build your toolbox for how to cope when things don't always go the way we want them to do the work today by taking the first step and make it a priority 15 minutes every day for the next 21 days I'm going to commit to making this a permanent fixture and truly realize that my attitude is everything because it's in everything I do and join us next time as we apply our attitude and our effective attitude to how it helps us communicate with other individuals we look forward to seeing you next time and we look forward to the progress you make as you make your attitude everything check us out on the excellence of management tab on the company intranet page for more information about this session and other sessions